Hey, you guys, how are you? I hope you're doing well today. Look at the beautiful color outside right now. Oh my gosh, I love this time of day. I hope you're all doing well. I want to chit chat a little bit. So as uh, as you're popping in, pop in and say hi. Uh, just put a hi in the comment section. It'll pop in and I can see that. Um, I'd love to chat with you a little bit today. I'm going to share a few more little tips and tricks. Thanks for the thumbs up. Oh, is that going to give me a... Yep, I got a little thumbs up bubble. Um, I think that's a riot. Look, two thumbs up. Fireworks. Woohoo! <laughs> I, I think that's crazy. Anyway, um, oh, hey, it's KS George, Kim. It's good to see you. How you doing? Chat with me. I love that photo of the spiral that you have. Landa, hi. It's good to see you as well. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to have a super fun time with you guys. Um, just want a little chit-chat back and forth. Miss Cindy Clark saying hello. It's great to see you as well. I see a kaleidoscope in your picture, and that makes me very happy as well. Yes, absolutely. Karen. Oh my gosh, it's been so long. How are you doing? Oh my gosh, you're amazing. I haven't seen you in forever. You guys, I feel like it's uh, family time right here for everybody. And today, anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm going to share some tips like I've been doing the last two days. But today, I'm going to get into show you a little bit about Lightroom because um, a lot of people just go Lightroom, Photoshop, and actually Photoshop is the thing that the general public knows and runs away in fear from, but Lightroom is a an amazing editing program and storage system, a cataloging storage system for photographers, and no doubt, um, I have no doubt that you guys have hundreds if not thousands of photos and then whenever you need to find them it's like ah no i took that picture but where is it well lightroom can help us deal with that and landa is asking about cordelia cordelia is doing very well in her new home um, and the interesting thing about cordelia being where she is two things the quilter uh, the the people that have her she's a quilter he works less than a mile from where they live they live on several acres um, in Forbes Park, which is, if I could throw a rock, it's like four miles from my house. But if I get in the car, it's going to take me an hour and maybe 15 to 20 minutes to get there because we have to weave around a bunch of mountains to get there. But she's got her little sister and um, a schnauzer that they had. They are a wonderful family. She is ad adapted very well. And we are a bit heartbroken, of course, that we had to go through this particular ordeal. Um, but um, we won't go see her until maybe spring. I don't want her to be confused or anything like that. So we get, you know, at least weekly updates on pictures and so forth. And if we asked for something, we could get it. So I'm really uh, blessed and happy. It was traumatic for us to go through that. So uh, Cindy's going, yes, thousands. And that's why Lightroom is such a, a great thing um, it's a storage system, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, any other, just put some questions. I know you've got some curiosities and questions, and I want to spend the first maybe five minutes today just chatting with you guys a little bit um, before I get into the whole spiel of everything I'm doing. Of course, I'm not too good at being a radio host. They have usually have those producers in the background fielding all the questions, but nonetheless... Cordelia is doing fine, and I really appreciate you asking about that. Rosie and Barley are here doing very well with us right now, and uh, we are about to leave. Hugo and I are leaving on Wednesday to drive to Texas. My mom's uh, 94th birthday is this week, so we're going to go and spend some time with her, and then um, we're going to make a little swing on our way back home, that'll take us through Santa Fe. Uh, we both love Santa Fe, so we will have uh, just a day and a half in Santa Fe, but it, it always feels good. And I cannot wait to have my camera with me to get some new pictures. Um, on the way to Texas, there's always these amazing, there's windmills, there's these old abandoned houses, these homesteads, these 
just these plays that catch my eye and they're always off the road and they're you're always going 65, 75 miles an hour just doing the thing to get to where you're going. And I'm hoping that this week, this because of when we're leaving, that we can actually breathe and if we see something, we can stop and go get these pictures. I have been wanting to do this now for maybe 20 years. And a couple of times I've stopped at one place, but I'm hoping to make this a little bit more leisurely and try to capture that vastness of the West in the plains where those old homesteads are with grasses and um, mesquite trees and things like that. So uh, here come Mr. Tim's, come, <laughs> come here, come here. I don't know where here is, Francine. I don't know where it is. Landa, I understand your decision. I'm glad she's doing well at a boxer pit mix and understand the issues. Yep. So James, hello, James. Good evening to you as well. Thank you for being here. All right, you guys, I wanted to spend about five minutes chit-chatting, <clears throat> but I'm just going to tell you again what I'm going to do today and also again why I'm doing what I'm doing. This is the time of the year that I need to do all out just full-on marketing and letting people know about my 52-week photo class that starts in January. This is my 10th anniversary year. I'm excited about this. Um, I, I can have as just about as many people as we want. Yes, I do have to cap the class, but uh, there's still plenty of openings. And we start in January, and these are week-by-week-by-week week week classes. You don't come with me live, so that's a good thing. You don't have to worry about that. But every Sunday, the, the lessons are posted, the video lessons with computer you know, imagery and all of that so that you can follow the lesson, and then you go out and do the challenge, and then you post your picture. And everybody in the class posts their picture in the same gallery, so everybody gets to see what everybody is doing. If the challenge happens to be windows or if the chap challenge happens to be blue, not sky, then we all get to see what everybody's doing. And sometimes the challenge is based on a technique, a camera technique. Sometimes it's based on an editing technique. And, um, and it's just a lot of learning, but it's in bite-sized pieces. So some of you have taken the class with me before. I still have my critique group for those that graduate after doing the entire year with me. I would love to see you back. Um, wink, wink, Karen. Um, and, and the rest of you, if you've not ever explored photography, I can't tell you how it will change your world. If you would just make this commitment to spend on average maybe two to three hours with me a week. That's the most investment you're going to have to have. The first maybe eight weeks, a little longer because some of you will be learning software and computer things that you're not used to. But once you get the feel of it and the hang of it, it is such a rewarding thing. So I'm on the screen is photoclassforyou.com. That's where you can go. That's where you can find it. And if you're, you know, if you're the one that's interested, I want you in class. I want to spend time with you. If you know of somebody that might want to do it with you, do it together and make each other accountable. If you've got a spouse or a friend or a neighbor that might be interested, um, I know that my base is primarily quilters. This is not a quilting class. It is truly a design class for photographers uh, to learn your camera, to learn composition, to learn software like Lightroom and Photoshop. So today I'm going to go through some camera tips some things that don't relate to a big DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera. It's just simply techniques that you can think about if you're using your smartphone or a big camera. And then I'm going to show you some things in Lightroom because many of you may have never experienced that. And I just want you to see the wow factor of all that. James, you're in Mad Adders. That's great. I will see you guys on Wednesday. That's what I'm going to do right before I leave for Texas. So you guys are on my list. Have you ever heard of Turkey? Te I have heard of te Turkey, Texas. Oh my gosh, Landa. Yes, I have. Do I need a high? You need just, you need a reasonable camera, DSLR or mirrorless. And I know that can be an investment, but if you, if you don't have one, go on Amazon. There are bundles that have not only the camera, but two lenses and maybe the, the cards, the, you know, the SD cards, the tripods, the bags and all of that. And you can get a bundle for like an $800 investment 
Put it on your credit card. You won't be disappointed. You can find a good a good starter camera, a good kit camera from anywhere from $800 to $1,100. And I know that sounds like a lot of money, but the truth is um, it will be a blessing to you and an investment that you will not uh, be sorry that you did. All right, so guys, I'm going to share um, over into, um, I'm going to share my computer and get over into here and just talk to you a little bit about uh, photography going from blah to awe. And today, I just want to say slow down, okay? One of the things that happens with us as photographers is we see something, we just want to grab it, we pick our camera, we go over, we pick, you know, we point, we shoot, we do what we do, and then we move on. The truth of the matter is, if you can force yourself to slow down, there's several things that will happen. Number one, you will think about the problems that are in the picture. I've already talked about tunnel vision and distractions. You will see more like, here's a turtle, here's a snail. You will look in the background to see, do I have any people walking back there? Is there a flagpole that I don't want to see in this picture? All you have to sometimes do is move two inches, literally two, three inches, and you can have something out of the frame that would be a distraction if it's in the frame. So I truly encourage you to slow down, solve your problems. But more than this, and this is going to sound a little odd, but I'm, I really buy into it. Freeman Patterson, who I studied with a couple of times, he said, you know, don't, if something's caught your eye, if something has really pulled you in enough to raise your camera don't treat it like a one-night stand. Thank you, bam, ma'am, I'm done, and off you go, all right? Take time to treasure it. Take time to adore it. Take time to see what more there is to offer from this thing and give it some love. Give it some time so that you can see it from different ways. And if you do that alone, if you will just slow down, that alone will truly take your pictures from blah to ah. All right, so that means you're going to explore your options. You saw the thing, but can you look at it in different ways? You can look at different angles. And then after you take the shot, which was your first inclination, just start looking around from different perspectives, lower, higher, uh, just swing around to the other side. What does the background do to the change? What does the light do if I turn over to this area? You can take it from different angles and you'll start finding that you're solving problems and teaching your brain how to see the best composition as we go. Here's an example of four photos that I literally moved less than eight inches to take. Less than eight inches from number one to number four. In the upper left, the, the flowers are kind of going straight up the middle pointing towards the rock in the distance. The second one, it kind of curves and it bends. The next one is bending. It's better. But look how the last one, by just moving a little bit to the left, I now have those flowers coming from the bottom right, and the subject is in the upper left. And that whole angle fills the frame more beautifully than just shooting straight on where all of the main interest is going straight up the middle and the things on the left and the right don't really support the image that much. This is not a glorious picture. I'm not trying to tell you that. I took this series of photos to just show you how moving six to eight inches can completely change a composition. So, and telling a story, I love this is a great thing. It's amazing how an array of elements can come together and tell a story in a single shot. It can be an idle and contemplative shot, and so that we're, we can ascertain things like the age of a piece of wood or an automobile, or we can see how weather has affected this thing that we're looking at, or wear and tear. So it doesn't have to be an action story, but it can be a story nonetheless. And it can be a story that is in the process of unfolding, or you can see it's about to unfold, which gives a bit of anticipation to the viewer. Oh my God, it's about to happen. You know, I don't know what it, what it is that's about to happen, but you can capture that moment.
Great journalism is ultimately about telling the stories. And so I'm not saying we're all going to be journalists, but when you're storytelling, that is what you're doing in a picture that oftentimes other people might tell a story in words. So a, 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 a story, a photo is a treasure. Now, I'm showing you this picture and I'm going to ask what's likely the reason for this photo. This was taken probably in the early 60s. This is my granny. Um, and I'm just, I know that somebody raised their camera, granny stood in front of that camera, and I need to figure out the story. There's not a lot to the story, but I'm going to assume it's like Mother's Day or Easter. She's in her Sunday finest, probably a new dress. If I'm betting she's off, she's showing off a new dress and they're getting ready to go somewhere. So Granny, don't you look beautiful? Take, let's take a picture of you in your new dress. And so it's not a, a massive story, but it's a document of a time and a place, and I get to see that. And to me, this, even in old photos, really helps to tell a story. And in this case, it's Granny's dress. And so because it's the dress, that's the emphasis, then you step back and you get head to toe, you get everything in the shot, because if I just pushed in and said, here's a picture of Granny's face, that's not about the dress. It's about the face. So sometimes you have to think about that. Here's a, story, a, a selfie of Hugo and I, and we're telling the story that we have our national flags hanging on the front of the house, and we're just enjoying the moment with our flags. So it doesn't have to be uh, you know, an outrageous story or anything that's... Uh, I don't know, super dynamic, but obviously the reason we're holding those flags behind us is to help tell our story of two countries. This is a fun story for me. You might remember that we had the wildfire in 2018. We planted about 2,000 trees. Maybe 400 of them have survived, and a few of them, the pines, have taken off. The firs grow slowly, but this was last summer. Look how big that tree is. This is 23, so this is five years. So that was four years. It went from a sapling that was no taller than my ankle all the way up to there. When I saw that tree and all of those burned trees, I just had to go give it a hug. So yes, I'm an official tree hugger, but that's the story that's being told there. This is a very interesting story. I won't tell you a lot of these in too long and in depth, but this is me backstage at the Carson Center in Paducah, Kentucky, where I started doing concerts in about 2006. And, um, and I started, instead of signing the wall with my name every time, I just added the date. And you can see that Carol Channing is on this wall. The Smothers Brothers are on this wall. Lily Tomlin is on this wall. So I'm with good company in there. This was this past summer. Um, obviously, it's I don't I don't know the the Spanish term, but it's the fifteenth the celebration um, for the Hispanic community. And uh, th there she is coming into the park. And I love this because she's in her fabulous dress. They're going to go get their photos taken, and she's got her tennis shoes on. So I loved that story. Um, I was up in Kelowna. Um, so my heart goes out to the people of Kelowna this year because they experienced that horrible fire as well. But this was several years ago, probably 2013, 10 years ago. And uh, these fellas were out. They had a, a strap that they had put on a couple of trees and they were playing kind of, you know, uh, tightrope, see who could stay on the longest. It was kind of fun. This is a very powerful and poignant story for me. Uh, this was taken in Dublin, Ireland. This is in front of our side of uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral. And this fellow is sitting there on the bench just looking very dejected. And when I took this picture, I knew that I needed to show this picture in a very unique way. He is feeling despondent. Now, I want to tell you he wasn't really. Okay, I need, I need you to know I watched him. He was not despondent. But at this particular second... He had to put his head down. He had his hand on his head, so he looks despondent. But I framed this in such a way that the cathedral, which is like a huge uh, sign of hope, is looming behind him, and he is very small, and I don't want to say insignificant, but he's small in the photo as if to say, look, life is not so great right now, but the answer is looming behind you. And if I had not pulled way back to show the emphasis of the church, 
I wouldn't be able to give that message of that particular story. So sometimes how you frame it, this is a story enough said, yes, I ripped my britches getting into the truck, and so we went ahead and grabbed the camera and reenacted the whole thing. I, I don't know what the story is, but I was driving through Pueblo, Colorado one day, and there's a dog on the roof, and I don't know what it is or how it got there, but it just made me so smile, uh, you know, to see the dog up there. So I carpe diem, took the time, used my phone camera, and took this picture. Portraits. Now, portraits are obviously things. I just want to, like, I was thinking about this as we, as I was preparing for today. Um, sometimes I don't like my picture taken. I don't like my picture taken. I don't like my picture taken. I'm going to tell you right now, somehow or another, I need you to get over that because there was a time in my day that I didn't either. All right. But I also feel that that's self centered and selfish because there needs to be documents of who we are throughout our life. There's no reason for you to dislike yourself so much that you cannot have a picture taken. Even if you choose not to look at it, allow the loved ones in your life to have these documents of who you are. So my little admonishment to you. Um, obviously, this is little Ricky when I was quite small. Um, this is a photo of my dad on the left, my aunt on the right, and my uncle Jerry uh, my aunt just passed last year. My dad passed in 2015, and Uncle Jerry passed in about the year 2000. Um, <laughs> the document of me not having front teeth, if nothing else. And yeah, so this is my sophomore picture in high school. Just enjoy these little moments. They wouldn't exist, and I couldn't show them to you if we had not taken them. And yes, these are very formal photos, all right? They don't have to be. A picture of you does not have to be formal. <laughs> this is my senior year high school, all right? Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Kim, for that word. I know what it is. I just can't say it. Um, but nonetheless, um, yeah, my... I'm a band student, I'm a music geek, and uh, that's enough of that one, but I'm glad it's there, and I'm glad that we can laugh at it. This is my sweet mom. She's celebrating 94 years this week, and we will be going to see her. Um, I love this picture. I don't even mind that it. it's got the crinkles and the wear and the age on it. It's still a sweet picture, and this is my mom a couple of years ago, and uh, boy, she is a beautiful lady, and she still is. This is my best friend's uh, son, John, and they came to visit. And I, I have another portrait that I showed you in a previous uh, session where he was straight on. This one, he's turned a little bit, but I really, really loved uh, shooting him for these photos. Uh, portraits don't always have to be people. This is Barley and Rosie, and they're our sweet pups that we love so much. And uh, trying to avoid as many distractions as possible, sometimes pet photos are difficult, and here's beautiful Cordelia. She is a regal queen, a glorious dog, and trying to show her in that light. <laughs> this is also Cordelia. A lot of Photoshop editing, I removed the background, but yes, yeah, she was actually wearing that rainbow-colored tutu, and then I did the Photoshop editing for that. Uh, this is my dad, and I love this picture. Again, this is why we take these pictures. They don't have to be in a studio. I don't know if he's in a bean patch or corn patch or whatever, but he's out on the farm somewhere. And there's my dad, just informal, but also posed. And I am so glad I have this picture. It's a treasure. My granny, again, I'm going to say it's probably Mother's Day or something like that. She's got a corsage on, and it's probably Church Day as well. She's really dressed up. And this says 1954 November, but of course it could have been developed. It could have been taken in May and not developed until November. Or it could have been a wedding or something like that that she went to. But I love having these portraits. This is my mom and my aunt. Um, they're both still with us. My mom's 94, my aunt's 91. And I realized when I took this picture in the scrapbook that my mom has been cut out from another picture and kind of positioned. You can see the shadows, so they're side by side. But this is kind of fun. There they are, and here they are a couple of years ago together. Isn't that fun to see them side by side as young girls and then seeing them now as beautiful uh, women? I think it's fabulous. So we take these pictures, everybody, and, and even with portraits, you know, like this, my great nephews, there's no reason that you can't have these amazing shots 
and learn how to frame them. This is my great nieces, and this is my niece. Just gonna go through freeze one of my one of my best friends, Brett, just being goofy. And my friend Susan from college, just happiness, right? And this is my uh, my niece and my stepniece, and they're on the concrete. I said, lay down. I, they didn't plan the clothes. It just happened to turn out to be gray. I loved the color of their hair, the, love, the color of their uh, their outfits, and uh, Zeta's red nails. I just, I just love this picture. There's ways to be creative when you're taking pictures of people. And of course... We are in the realm in the world of selfies these days. So I want to just share you with you. These are selfies, and we can do selfies, but we can do ussies. This is me and Kay England, who I adore and love so much. And this is me and Barley. This is an ussy because it's two of us. Me and a quokka on Rottnest Island on the Western Australia. This is a selfie that you have to do, but I'm going to call it an ussy because there's more than me. And then groupies. Groupies, this is Hugo and his brother and me, and we're on the Rio Grande River somewhere in Colorado. Same thing. Groupie pictures. Ah, <laughs> uh, Sue Nichols, Pat Holly. This was this was obviously at a quilt show where we were visiting with each other. And then ensembles. When you've got a lot of people, you got to figure out how to make it work. This is my niece and her family on a Fourth of July celebration. And you want to feature the whole ensemble, but you want to minimize the distractions because the more things there are. And in this case, I have to tell you, nighttime really helped me. On the left, I have kind of a group shot. The people are here helping to plant the little trees. If you look in the bottom, you can see that little tree. So that tells a particular story, but it doesn't really feature the people. And then on the right, because I moved in and got closer, we get a little more formal. I mean, they're kind of posed for both of them, but we have a more defined photo of portrait on the right side. I shared this the other day. It's just one of my favorite pictures. Those kids are standing there. They're waiting for water to spray on them. You can see how wet everything is and the reflection and their wet clothes and that face that's on the wall, which is LED lights. Looks like bricks, but it's LED lights and she's about to spit water <laughs> on them and they're just waiting and waiting and waiting for it to happen. This is uh, Susan, who I just showed you a few minutes ago, and Hugo and myself, we were in Saint, uh, San Francisco. I wanted to take a picture of us using this painted wall as a background. I didn't have a tripod. This is a smartphone photo. I went over and propped it up on the curb, and I love this low vantage point for the photo. I thought it turned out great. So there's so many good ways to do group shots. I'm going to come back to you now and see if you've got any comments that you want to make about what I've shared with you so far. I'm watching my time because I want to do some Lightroom here for the last 10 minutes for you. Yeah, nice plaid pants. You're right, Cindy. So... Are any of these uh, ideas coming to mind for you as things that either you've experienced or you thought, oh my God, it's an aha moment? I would hope that you could think an entire year of that could change your life. And I don't mean like spiritually, but I can tell you I cannot live through a day without looking at my world as an artful thing. And whenever I see it through the frame of that camera, when I see something and I can push in for it, I just absolutely feel so rewarded that I'm able to go ahead and capture this thing. I don't have enough mind to memorize and remember everything I have seen. So having a photo of these moments, I love the fact that they recall these special moments that happened to us. All right, so hey, Johnny, Johnny, it's so good to see you. You need to be in my class this year, that's for sure. Ty can tell you that. All right, you guys, I'm going to pop over to Lightroom, so let me do that real quick. Um, da -da 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 -da, and start sharing my... All right, so here's Lightroom, and... Why is it behaving like that all of a sudden? It should be on this. There we go. That's what I want. And I want to go to that folder, and I want to go to rated, and I want to go to these photos. All right, so 
I'm going to, I got to really kind of move this out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to hide the comments for just a moment and so I can see what I'm actually working on here in Lightroom. All right, so this is a photo that I took. I believe we were in the car. I saw the sculpture. This is, these are all in Portugal. Um, I think I'm having a trouble right now remembering where we were. Sintri, uh, I'm sorry, never mind. Don't make me say the name, but I saw this, wanted to get a shot of it, and I'm doing the best I can with what I have. But I want you to look at this picture and I just want you to watch how quickly I'm able to take that picture from this to this. And this is what our camera does. Even though I'm not on point and shoot here, I am using some uh, manual settings, but no matter what, the camera is going to make a decision and in this case, because of this bright light sky, it needed to darken everything else. But with just that fast in Lightroom, you can go just wonderful. And then if I want to, I could punch up those colors, make it feel a little bit more. I could even go in and say, I want the buildings to be a little more yellow because they were. So let me go in and do that. Where's my HSL? Color grading detail. Come on, bring in the SHL. They have moved things on me just within the last two days when I did an upgrade on my um, on my Lightroom. So I'm going to leave that right now because it's not where it's supposed to be. Anyway, um, I wanted to share with you. Let's just say, I'm going to zoom into this area right here. Let's go into Let's go into it right here. And let's just say this is a blemish that I don't want in the picture. Maybe it was a, a bug or something that I just really don't want. In Lightroom, there's a healing tool. And just watch how quickly. One, two, three. That's gone, right? And then look at this picture now. So super wonderful, easy things to do in Lightroom. And one more time on the before. Oops, sorry. The before and after. Before, after. It's amazing. Here's another shot. This was a fellow walking down. This is, again, I'm taking this out of the car. I am constantly looking for composition. And I saw this wonderful wall and the silhouette of this fellow. But I also want you to see how quickly, again, I can bring some details out on that guy. And I can make some things happen here. I'm going to probably pull up the exposure a little bit. I'm going to make the texture go a little bit, some clarity, maybe a little bit more vibrance as well. And in this case, I feel like I might want to rotate this just to get those lines a little bit more vertical. And I will do that. And then now look, before and after, the huge difference that can happen just in seconds. Um, here's a lovely, this is so typical. The, of everything. So let me just do some of my quick normal adjustments. I'm going to really punch this up. And in this case, I'm going to go to a square crop, move that over so that I'm losing all of this on the left. The wire coming down and that red, I'm going to come right on in and just let the red and the green frame this. And here is the before and after. It's pretty amazing, right? Now, on this particular image, I have to tell you, I had been somewhere else and I had my ISO so high that the camera didn't know what to do. And I ended up with these super overexposed photos. Now, I'm not going to be able to fix this one perfectly, but I want to show you when you're shooting uh, raw, the information is there, even though this is what the camera gave me. So get ready for this. I'm going to do all of these things. I'm going to take the exposure way down. I'm going to take the contrast back. I'm going to add some texture. I'm going to lose a little bit of the whites, blacks, vibrance. And even though I can't fix it perfectly, I went from here to here very quickly. And you can see, once you become adept at where the controls that we're dealing with, you're able to deal with that. One more picture, and then I'm going to say goodbye for you today. This is um, one of the boats on the canals in Portugal. And again, doing these wonderful 
images. And let's just say I don't want the six up there. I just don't want to see it. So I'm just going to get rid of that six. And now here we go. There's before, after, before, and after. It's just amazing. Come on. It's, it's thinking. <laughs> Sorry. There's after. I, I really love working in Photoshop, uh, Lightroom. And then, of course, we get into Photoshop and we do a lot of things in Photoshop that, um, that allow us to just do some magical things. And um, I certainly have enjoyed the process of doing this. Um, how about you guys? Anybody uh, feeling like you're learning something or surprised? I would love to have you in my class next year. Please take time to register. The price right now through December the 10th is 72% off. You guys, I teach, I teach a quilt class for five sessions or six sessions, and that's it just for maybe four or five weeks that are the price of this entire year right now, 52 weeks of lessons. The part one is 26 weeks, and if you can survive the 26 weeks, then I do a 13-week uh, course and then another 13-week course to get you through the end of the year. So please share this with your friends, your family, your loved ones, your neighbors, and I really hope that you'll join me in 2024 for my 10th anniversary celebration. Um, I think it will change your life, and I will look forward to having you part of my family. The biggest surprise for me in year one, I just wanted to teach, 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 and the biggest surprise was we had students from all over the world and by doing this weekly and putting your name on those pictures and telling us your story, we got to be a community. And I've got many of those students now that have stayed with me in the critique group year after year. And some of these wonderful people I've never even met face to face, but my heart is certainly with them. So I would love for you to go on that journey with me. All right. So thanks for your time today. I'm going to do a live at five again tomorrow because Wednesday I'm going to be traveling. So if you would like to come back tomorrow for a few more insights and tips, I've got a lot more to share and I'm just really happy to spend some time with you guys. So I wish you all the best. Thank you so much for being with me today. I'll say goodbye. I hope your holiday shopping is going well. All the concerts are going well. You know, all those things that happen this time of the year. And just don't forget to sign up right there at photoclassforyou.com. Whichever one of those works best for you, I will love to see you in class. Thank you, everybody. Take care.